Welcome back motorized bike enthusiast. I got a quick tips video for you here today, but first this is a VR video. So if you're on desktop, you can move the video around to look at whatever you want. Most of the action is going to be right here in front of me. If you're on mobile, you can swipe the screen or move the phone. Enjoy. Let me know what you guys think of these VR videos. If it's something you want more in the future, but I think it's a good way to do this quick little tips video. Um, I'm going to show you how to find your stock unlabeled jet size. So you have a starting point when you're ready to rejet your bike. This is big because it will save you a lot of time when you rejet. Now, many different carburetors from different manufacturers will have completely different jet sizes. Don't go off of what you read online, test it yourself. Because I've found that carburetors which look absolutely identical to each other from different manufacturers have totally different jet sizes. I'm going to test two in this video, but it will work on pretty much any motorized bike carburetor. You don't need any measuring devices. You just need some sandpaper, some solder, and some known jets that are labeled. Okay. I use this thin solder here I got from Walmart. You can use the thick stuff in a pinch. It'll take a little longer to work with and it's kind of finicky when you get into the really small jets, but it will work on the larger jet sizes. Alternatively, you could probably use a piece of copper wire. It'll take a lot longer to make the tool, but the tool will probably be more accurate and last quite a bit longer if this is something you find yourself doing quite often. Okay, so let's find out what the jet size is for our stock YD100 and a stock generic NT carburetor that was $10 off Amazon. They're going to have different jet size, I know that, so let's find out. The more jets you have, the closer you'll be able to get to the right size to know your starting point. Um, but it's important that you have the jets that go up in increments of one. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can find these. So you don't make the same mistake I did buying your first jet kit off of Amazon. These are five millimeter jets. They will work. Usually they're going to be way too rich. But the problem with most of Amazon's is that they go up in increments of five. So 60, 65, 70, 75, so on and so forth. Whereas with these small motors that are really picky about having the right amount of fuel, you might have a bike that runs perfectly fine on a 68 jet. But a 70 is way too rich and it runs like crap and a 65 is too lean and you burn up your motor so enjoy anyways to make your gauge all you're going to do is take your sandpaper i'm using 320 grit lay one piece on a table hold the other in the palm of your hand index with your thumb and your pointer go ahead and sandwich your solder apply light pressure you don't need to go to town on this and just pull rotate pull it only took me about five minutes to make this. I already did it for the sake of the video. Just keep rotating it, keep pulling it. Make your solder kind of long because you might break the end off a few times. It's pretty fragile, but you don't need much. Go ahead and run your finger along, clean it off. Now remember some solder has lead in it, so wash your hands when you're done. You only need to keep sanding this until your smallest jet, I have a number 61 here, fits onto your gauge. I'm a little shaky tonight, so let's see if we can get it in there. There we go. That's a 61, so we definitely don't need to go any further. So let's find out what our jet size is for a YD100 carburetor. Now remember, different manufacturers could have different jet sizes. Keep that in mind. Don't go off of my measurements. Try this yourself. All right. Our YD100 wants to stop right there. So that is where we will hold to mark the spot, take our jet off, start with the number 70 since I know the YD100 is going to be a pretty fat jet and it's definitely fatter than a 70 okay so we will go to our next step up now unfortunately I have a gap in my available jets our next step up is a 76 these larger jets were donated by a viewer Zelda number 17 thank you very much he gave them to us like a year ago and we're just now getting to using them in a video okay it's pretty close to a 76 but still a bit fatter. My 77 is missing. There's a hole in the bag, of course, so who knows where that is. Let's try a 78. 78 makes it to our mark. Does it go further? Yes, it does, just a little bit. So we know the YD100 is in between a 78 and a 76. What is it? It's a 77. This is a 77 stock jet in the YD100. Let's move on to a generic NT carburetor. This is the standard thing that'll come on most of your super cheap kits. That doesn't mean it's going to be the same jet size as yours, but it's probably going to be close. Anyways, it's going to be smaller than the YD100, that's for sure. There we go. All right, mark it.
and let's start with a 65. Okay, 65 is too small. Let's step it up to a 67 because it looked like it was quite a bit smaller. Not much closer. Oh, hold on, I might be stuck. Okay, nope, that's close. Might be right on. So let's straighten our gauge and retest this 67 against the stock jet. There's where our 67 stops. Mark it. Stock NT jet. Makes it to our mark. Does it go further? It does not. That's a 67. All right, so with this test, we're able to find our starting point. So if I'm a little too rich, I know that a 67 is too big, and I can step it down to 66, 65, so on and so forth, vice versa. And uh, there's no need to test the other carburetors. The process is the same. I hope you guys enjoyed this short little VR video and enjoyed the view looking around at random stuff. I know it's a mess in here, and it's interesting sometimes, but until next video, ride safe.